Yeah. So we are discussing about you know why we can't feel love for Krishna now. So the, most of the people are trying to search whatever they are doing. They are doing for getting happiness at different different level. Okay. So in the basic session we discuss different way in terms of eating, sleeping, meeting in different ways. So, what is the Aha Nidra Bhai and Methun? It is common to both human being and animal. Then, what makes a human being different? That is Dharma. If human being doesn't follow Dharma, then he is like animal only. But here we are going to discuss at different level. So, level of happiness. It should be a different, different sastra talks about Annamaya, uh, Pranamaya, Manomaya, Vigyanamaya, and Anandamaya. Some people feel happy just getting a food. Okay. If people are getting food, they are worried about their existence. So existence not in terms of a body, but existence in the office. No, they want to prove that there is some uh, somewhere I am existing. That Everyone is worried for that existence. Uh, existence in the society, existence in some club, existence in whatever field we are working. So that is pranamaya. Okay. Or maybe if someone is getting food, uh, I remember you know, when I was in hospital, I saw one person. He was very rich guy. But the problem for him was that he cannot walk. He was just 60 year old and his both the lungs were uh, failed. They were working. Uh, so he always has to walk having the oxygen tubes inside the nose and oxygen bottle. He has to carry in the hand. Without, and he has to, that oxygen bottle work for another one or two hours. Then at the home, he has to carry the machine which produce oxygen. So that is called pranamaya, different way. Okay, he is getting food, but struggling for existence. Okay, then another level is annamaya, pranamaya, manomaya. Some people need emotional support, no? emotional need. So that is called manomaya. Vigyanamaya, people are uh, what you know, intellectual. They need intellectual need, satisfaction. Uh, so that Vigyana here intellectual is in terms of that Athato Brahma Jigyasa. So some people they are acquiring about knowledge, still they don't feel happy unless and until they engage in the service of Lord Krishna. Okay, so even the Mayavadi they are great, they are so knowledgeable. Okay, but the only one thing missing in them is Krishna. So if that they add Krishna, they, they will come at the Anandmaya stage. So same way here, the happiness is different, different levels, spiritual, intellectual, mental, and physical. So physical is at lowest level. So if you connect, you can match with five. And even there is a I, uh, Mason's law, I think, forgot whose law. They say, you know, uh, there are people need a satisfaction at food level, then it goes up to self-actualization level. Uh, so I forgot who made that law. Okay, so physical, eat, drink, be merry, whatever. Mental, music, art, poetry, sports, whatever. And intellectual, debates, brainstorming, whatever. Spiritual, praying, yoga, reading scripture, all those things are there. So although these needs are there, what is the problem with the people? Uh, they will not be happy unless and until they inquire about real problems of the life. So what is the real problem common to all? We had already discussed this part, so I'm going quickly. No one wants it. No one can avoid it. So which are those? Like, you know, uh, birth, death, disease, old age. So these are the real problem. No one wants uh, death. No one wants disease. No one wants old age. And even the birth has so much problem. Medical sense is that a child is in the womb of mother, it can, it can suffer a lot. Okay, so it's very miserable. 
so then there are uh, uh, apart from that there are some other problems adhyatmic problems problems due to our mind and body uh, then problems due to other living entities that is called adi bhautik klesha then uh, there are natural calamities just nowadays there are so much flood in different different places so that is called adi devi klesha earthquake whatever all those things so these are the different problems and people are trying to overcome this problem at different different level some are trying to come at scientific level philosophical level atheistic level protective workers they are trying to solve the problem is that different different level okay so scientists give uh, patchwork solution like you know uh mere baal safed ho gaye so then i will apply uh, godrej hair dyeing i have a wrinkle then i will apply whatever karen lovely kya hota hai pata nahi jo bhi hai okay treatment for disease then you know we have medicine then some people need uh, entertainment so philosopher you know speak with you know the philosophical are chala jayega aaya hai life is not a bed or bed of rose keep it simple stupid live in now keep an open keep an open mind let's go of all disease let go of all disease be positive speak with the winners and there are atheistic so they you know if the bible is mistaken in telling us where we came from how can we trust it to tell us where we are going so these are different different atheists who are giving the argument you know the way to see by faith is to shut the eyes of reason so no that's not the truth karl marx says the first request for the happiness of the people is the abolition of the religion is the opium of the masses karl marx says that he was a prominent pro, 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 proponent of uh communism religions are all alike founded upon fable and mythologies but these people don't know they don't they themselves are fable they are not acute or they are cute means they are in they are fallible they will not exist after some time and as we discuss in nectar of devotion the atheist has to accept the existence of the god at the time of death okay so fruity workers try to give solution okay all this thing i can i can is 100 times more important than iq okay so uh, it's a blood sweat sometimes tears they say no it's hard work Uh, i forgot one of the prime minister said that talk less work hard uh, so then prabhupad was there and he says you know they saw this thing i think that some really was going on talk less work hard so prabhupad said so there are four kind of people lazy intelligent busy busy intelligent lazy fool and busy fool prabhupad said we should be lazy intelligent lazy intelligence are great and busy full are dangerous because busy and they are they don't know what they are doing so they are doing something so that's going to create problem so that's why busy intelligence are very dangerous then lazy intelligence they think and do they don't immediately do and busy intelligence they do and then think lazy intelligence first think and then do so it's not about that then proper says first so Uh, discuss more work less so, so. kaam aise kar baat aise socho ki aapka kaam hi kam karna pade so then is if you train hard you will not only be hard you will be hard to beat so sweat is the collagen uh, of accomplishment so these are the different different thing then 
the fruity workers even they go at different level black magic astrology palm tree uh, tarot cards and parrot cards is also there yeah but scientists give temporary solution scientists give solution which become new problem air pollution industry related stress increasing destructive wars fatal disease okay so now um, water pollution so scientists give you solutions which can result in only better sense gratification so now all of you might be discussing why am i discussing this all this thing in nectar of devotion bhakti rasam rasindi but what's the reality that we have to set first okay sense gratification is painful like the two side of coin material pleasure brings material pain free of cost it's a package deal so sometimes you know uh, that's what bhagavad gita says right in what is that matra sparsha astu konte sito swasthya dukha da agami pai this tam tik so bad but we have to tolerate we cannot avoid that so sense gratification is addictive sense gratification okay addictive then you know you might have been heard uh, uh fireflies how many of you have seen fireflies they like to go near fire so sense gratification is like this thing i'm giving five example so these are fire flies they like to go closer to fire so, so their eye so five senses for five senses i'm going to give five example so one roaming sense can create a havoc for the person so fire uh, fire flies is so much attracted towards fire So it uh, tries to go closer to the fire, and as soon as it goes very near to fire, it burns. Then deer, which really likes to hear so nice music, uh, and as soon as you know someone uh, that hunter comes and play the music, which attracts the deer, then immediately and the deer will be caught by the hunter. So that is the second example: ear being you know attracted by hearing. Third. is uh that uh, what is it called sorry fish so fish is attracted by that uh, tongue smell right the if you put something in the water and not fish is eating i think yeah eating yeah so when it tries to eat uh, something you have put just like you can see it will be catch easily it will be caught easily so the fish lose the life just because of her tongue eating propensity is so active so there are three senses and there is a touch and there is a touch sense is elephant uh, elephant likes you know so much attracted by uh, see elephant just by seeing her he go mad and uh, as soon as it tries to go closer to see mad what happen they make one big hole big dug in the earth and it immediately fall inside one side they keep see elephant and one side is male elephant so they want to catch so they can easily catch the sea elephant but between there is a big dug so when elephant come it goes inside so which one sense and more senses is left Uh, smell i forgot what was the smell whatever so yeah so that way you know, the this this kind of animal has only one roaming sense one active sense because of that they are caught very easily but human being has all five senses are active very very active that's why it is said in bhagavad gita even one roaming sense can carry away the person just like uh, a uh, boat car easily carried away by uh, boat easily carried away by the water sorry air so 
so uh, okay just like a moth maddened by the fire rush blindly into the flames an elephant you can see how it can be caught okay then donkey working hard simply for some morsel of grass for eating yeah and fish was for smell sorry yeah i made a mistake sorry tongue yeah okay so this is so people basically in sense gratification they are chewing the chewed one so many people have done they have not got the happiness and now again they are trying to do so someone has chewed and again we are trying to chew so that's why it is known as chewing the chewed one so basically sense gratification is frustrating it's like itching so suppose you have some itching here and you itch more so temporarily feel happiness but after some time blood start coming from it then again after some time it start itching so the sense gratification is like that the, however much you enjoy try to enjoy the sense gratification that much we suffer okay uh, so so it's uh, unsatisfactory so basically it's perishful sense gratification is perishful so we have made a full form painful addictive risky illusory stale uh, frustrating lowering of discomfort and unsatisfactory so that's what still we read so bhakti rasa however the mellow relish in the transcendental loving service of the lord does not finish with the end of life it continues perpetually and is there for amruta um, uh, Okay. That which does not die but exists eternally. So mm -hmm. this is how. Okay. Any action performed for the sense gratification of Krishna in this transcendental bhakti rasa stage of life can be released perpetually. It never diminishes. That's what we discussed yesterday. Neha bi kramana asta pratyavaya na vidyate sarpa apeshe dharmasya trayate mahate bhayat. So when one is thus engaged in devotional service, all variety of rasas or mellow turn into eternity. So all the whatever we want to enjoy, whatever relations, whichever relationship we want to enjoy, we can repose them. We can connect them with Krishna. Okay, if we don't connect them Krishna, then we have to understand they are not amruta, but they are amruta. Okay. So what is the benefit? Of connecting all our activities, Lord Krishna, so it's it's become nishkam karma. If we what whatever activity we are doing, if we connect the Krishna, so basically it becomes like a nishkam karma yoga. The main difference between, or maybe sakam karma yoga also. Okay, so it's become bhakti just by adding Krishna. Arjuna was satriya, the warrior, but he added Krishna, so his fighting become the devotional service. is fighting spirit become the devotional service okay kubja she was just uh, making uh, sandalwood pulp for king kamsha so when he uh, she met krishna and she gave a sandalwood pulp to krishna what happened when she gave on the request of krishna so it become a devotional service for her so same way there are in the same chapter there are so many example one is flower garland maker One is tailor. They offer some clothes to Krishna. They offer garland to Krishna. So that become the de devotional service. Just we have to add. We don't have to change our activity. Whatever activity you are doing, you add the Krishna. It become a devotional service. We are not telling to stop any activity. Okay. So basically, that can be led to two things. We, we might be doing this activity for Krishna, just expecting some result from him, or we are doing this activity for Krishna without expecting any result. If you are doing this activity with expectation of result, that's not pure bhakti, but that is a sakam karma. And if you are doing activities for Krishna without expecting any result, and we are attached to one particular activity, if you are told, "Oh, you are software engineer, now you do civil engineering work," 
इसलिए नो नो वो मैं नहीं कर सकता मैं कृष्णा के लिए करूंगा तो सिर्फ सॉफ्टवेयर इंजीनियरिंग करूंगा सो यू आर अटैच टू एक्टिविटी एंड दैट वे यू आर कनेक्टिंग टू कृष्णा देन बिकम इस काम कर मे इट्स नॉट प्योर डिवोशनल सर्विस सो प्योर डिवोशनल सर्विस इज आल्सो एक्टिविटी बट यू आर रेडी टू डू एनी एक्टिविटी एज पर द डिजायर ऑफ कृष्णा बट इन द निष्काम कर्म योग व्हाट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन प्योर भक्त एंड निष्काम कर्म योग you are attached to one particular activity and you connect that activity with krishna in the pure devotional service you are not attached to any activity you are attached to krishna and for krishna you can do any activity hope you got this point okay so this is the difference uh, like you know uh, between pure bhakti and nishtam karma yoga is that the action of one in pure bhakti are initiated by his devotion means koi bhi activity karoge because of love for krishna the act of one in nishtam karma yoga is generally initiated by some kind of attachment so you are connected with one activity and you connect that with krishna we then purified by offering the fruits to krishna okay so freedom comes by connecting our activities with lord's service lord krishna explained that by acting in this way one will free from bondage of work and more than that one will become liberated vimukti so these are given in different different scriptures so krishna special favor to his devotee so when we render service that you know krishna give favor to his devotee he says that one may argue that krishna special affection for his devotee is the same terms of attachment and aversion But no it's not that krishna says in uh, भगवद गीता नाइन पॉइंट ट्वेंटी सेवन जैसी आप उनसे इच्छा रखोगे ऐसी इच्छा वो आपकी वो इच्छा आपकी पूर्ण कर देंगे सो दैट्स अगेन इज नॉट कॉन्ट्राडिक्टिंग He says in Bhagavad Gita 4.11, ये था माम प्रपद्यंते ताम सत्ते भजामि हम मम्मा वर्तमानु वर्दन्ते मनुष्य पासे सर्वशा। The way you surrender to Krishna, that way he reciprocates. So he is reciprocating with everyone. Someone coming as an enemy, Krishna reciprocates with him as an enemy. Someone is coming to Krishna as a lover, Krishna reciprocates with as a lover. Someone come to Krishna as a friend, he reciprocates with him as a friend. Just like Arjuna, then Gopis of Vrindavan as a lover. The Nand Baba, they were actually also Krishna reciprocated with them as a child. Okay, so he reciprocated with everyone as per their desire. So he is equal, right? He is equally reciprocated, isn't it? Uh, as per their desire. So he is not partial to anyone. He is not envying to anyone. He is fulfilling their desire. But what he says? Ye bhajan si tu maam bhaktiya mai te te su chapi ham, but Whoever renders service unto me in devotion is friend, is in me, and I am also a friend to him. So that what the sentence is. This is what is mentioned here. So hope this is clear. So of course. someone is serving krishna as a friend so he has to reciprocate uh, it's not about partiality okay so krishna's compassionate glance upon his devotee so we can understand this point now so krishna takes personal interest in his devotee's life so if devotee is in trouble krishna takes personal interest just like the gajendra dropadi they are example so although you know uh, they never they or did uh, didn't ask for some favor always there are some people they always ask favor but their life critical situation they remember krishna 
temporarily they remember oh krishna help me so that doesn't change their position from pure devotees so we will discuss that later on so so basically this is the concluding thing so you know the author of bhakti rasa amrut sindhu srila prabhu was saying very humbly submit that he just trying to spread krishna consciousness all over the world although he humbly think himself unfit for this work so that should be our attitude although we may be qualified but we should understand i am unfit by the mercy of acharya only we can do that should be the attitude for all the preachers of the krishna conscious movement following in the pushta go sila rup goswami uh and we should never think of ourselves a great preacher but should always consider that we are simply instrumental to the previous acharya and simply by following their footstep we may be able to do something for the benefit of suffering humanity okay so basically and we saw that uh why you know uh, why we are not able to feel happiness for krishna because we have a different different level of ego you know there are some different different level of layers like you know some are scientific level some are atheistic level because of all this layer they are not feeling happiness okay. they are not feeling the pleasure of krishna but if they add somehow or other krishna in their life then automatically krishna start reciprocating with them okay so so that's what he says so bhakti rasa amrut sindhu so yes here like you know the eternal engagement in bhakti rasa can be understood by serious student upon studying so who can understand all those what we discuss what is nishkam karma yoga what is you know who can be friend with krishna who can be uh, in love with krishna just by studying the nectar of devotion that's why it is written so adoption of bhakti rasa or krishna consciousness will immediately bring one to the auspicious life free from anxiety and will bless one with transcendental existence thus minimizing the value of liberation so when someone start performing bhakti he even forget to get liberation he feel so happy in the life okay provided that you know they have sufficient faith so that is the power of bhakti will discuss the characteristic of pure devotional service benefits of pure devotional service we'll discuss that so so bhakti rasa rasa itself is sufficient to produce a feeling of liberation because it attracts the attention of supreme personality of god so yesterday we saw mukti pade daya bhag so mukti stays at the lotus feet of lord krishna okay so but when we perform bhakti krishna himself gets attracted towards the bhakta so what happened that so now krishna himself is attracted towards bhakta then what is the use of mukti which is at stays at the lotus feet of krishna right? krishna himself is coming to you right mukti who has taken the shelter of krishna the shelter of the mukti himself coming attracted towards bhakta then what is the use of mukti so bhakti rasa itself is sufficient to produce a feeling of liberation so within this body itself person can feel liberation okay but generally neophyte devotee are anxious to see krishna or god but god cannot be seen or known by present material blunt senses so as we discussed that uh, in second session of basic course first session of basic course the our eyes are imperfect our senses are imperfect they are uh, like we cannot see i cannot see properly without this pack i cannot hear um, all of you who are sitting far distance without ear phone so i am conditioned so my senses are imperfect right i cannot hear beyond 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz so basically my senses are imperfect so god can exist beyond all those things okay so 
then what we have to do if you want to see television then we have we should have that device which converts electromagnetic wave or whatever micro konsa waves jo bhi hai bol gaya bin uska that can be converted to pictorial form then we can see so there should be some transmit receiver and transmitter okay so if you want to modulator sorry so if you want to see the god then we should also have a modulator through which we can see the god so we should have some device just like we can't see the oil in the peanuts but oil is there we can't see oil in the almond but oil is there so how then there is a process to how to get that oil we can't say ghee inside the butter inside the milk but there is a process to take out the butter from the milk so same way god exists we are not able to see but there is a process the process of devotional service as it is recommended in the nectar of devotion will gradually elevate one from material condition of life to spiritual status wherein the devotee become purified of all designation because right now we are materially conditioned we are not able to see but when we perform bhakti then we will come at a spiritual status purified from all material designation the senses can then become uncontaminated now when the contaminated stage our senses are just like if i put a orange layer on my specs i can see everything orange if i uh, i remember my specs are the blue ray so now if i go without specs i feel so intensity of the light because of some layers are there so those layers are removed i can see the god my senses will be purified okay so the senses can be uh, can then become uncontaminated and constantly in touch with bhakti ras just like you know an iron rod is kept in fire constantly it also take a shape of fire it also become a fire. act like a fire it is not fire but acts like a fire similar way when we are constantly in touch with bhakti rasa then we can be free from this material designation when the purified senses are employed in the service of the lord one becomes situated in bhakti rasa life and any action performed for the satisfaction of krishna in this transcendental bhakti rasa stage of life can be reduced perpetually so whatever per- bhakti we perform with purified senses can be released for which so when one is thus engaged in devotional service all varieties of rasa or melo turn into eternity just like as i mentioned that someone is boy and girl are living but as soon as one of them or both of them die it finished and in this case of krishna but if same loving prop- loving propensity be reposed to krishna it will never Uh, ter- it will never it will not be terminated so in the beginning one is trained according to the principle of regulation under the guidance of acharya so in the beginning we required we required training just like when you are learning bicycle or when you are learning motorcycle or maybe four wheeler or maybe while you were practice typing in the beginning now after some time you without saying you can type if you are playing harmonium in the beginning you have to see after some time you don't have to see just close your eyes you can easily play okay so in the big so in the beginning you require rules and regulation uh, if you are learning you know music sa re ga ma pa da ni sa you know sa sa re whatever you have to learn all those things but after that you don't have to you know uh, do all those things so that's what it is saying in the beginning we have to un- undergo rules and regulation under the guidance of acharya guru and gradually when one is elevated devotional service become automatic and is characterized by characterized by spontaneous eagerness to serve krishna so as we have shown yesterday one verse tana naam roop charita adi sukirtana anu that what we discuss in nectar instruction so right now we are this so we are not able to 
release the sweetness of bhakti. So, so materially diseased person is compared with one who is suffering from jaundice, who cannot release the sugar cane juice, who cannot feel the sweetness of sugar cane juice. And for him, the medicine is sugar cane juice, which he feels better, bitter when he's suffering from jaundice. So he may not like to drink sugar cane juice because he feels bitter while suffering from jaundice. But his medicine is sugar cane juice, so he has to drink. But as gradually he drinks the sugar cane juice, what will happen? Gradually he will start feeling the sweetness of sugar cane juice. Similarly, in the beginning, he may not like to practice bhakti, but if he gradually practices under the guidance, rules and regulation, not spontaneous, then time will come. Now they don't want to give it up. That is what is mentioned here. So there are 12 kinds of rasa, as will be explained in this book. Different, different rasa. Five primary rasa and seven are secondary rasa. Okay. So, the, so this is the purpose of nectar of devotion, to bring one from materialistic life to spiritual life. So basically, the basic principle of living condition is that we have the propensity to love someone. We have discussed this thing. No one can live without loving someone else. So this propensity is present in every living being. Okay, so hope you all of you agree with this thing. Even an animal like tiger has this loving propensity, at least in a dormant state. And it is certainly present in the human beings. The missing point, however, is where to repose our love. So yesterday I gave an example of yesterday, day before yesterday, I could not remember. But if you want to make a tree uh, green, there are two ways. You put the water on the leaf. It will become green, but if you regularly put water on the leaf, not putting on the root, then after some time, same leaf will become yellowish. Point here is that, but if you put water at the root, the leaf will become greenish automatically. So we have to repose our loving propensity at the root, not uh, distracted way. No. Everywhere, sorry, at the root, who is Krishna? So that point is missing nowadays. So at present moment, the human society teaches one to love his country or family or his personal self. That's good. That's not bad. But there is no information where to repose the loving propensity so that everyone can become happy. So loving country, family is not bad. That's good. Still in a mode of goodness, but it's not mode of pure goodness. That is temporary. But if you put it in the, put it for Krishna, then it has a permanent effect. So that missing point is Krishna. So everything is like a zero, 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 and Krishna is like one. Now you have to decide where you want to put one, left side or right side. If you put your left side, then it has more value. And if you put your right side, then lesser value. If you don't put, there is no zero value. Okay. So that missing point is Krishna. And the nectar of devotion teaches, teaches us how to stimulate our original love for Krishna and how to be situated in that position where we can enjoy our peaceful life. Okay. So basically, you know, Gradually, we have to do that's what is taught here. In the primary stage, a child loves his parent, then his brother and sister, and as he daily grows up, he begins to love his family, society, community, country, nation, or even the whole human society. So, as he grows, his generally his loving propensity should be expand, not uh, like different different way. This way. Earlier, just parents, especially that is also mother, other comes later for the child, then yeah, you know, brother, siblings, whatever. Okay. But the loving propensity is not satisfied even by loving all human society. 
that Levin propensity remains imperfectly fulfilled until we know who is the supreme beloved. So we have to put this propensity at the root, who is the source of all love. That's why we have one book called Krishna, the Reservoir of Pleasure. So our love can be fully satisfied only when it is reposed in Krishna. So this is this theme is some and substance of nectar of devotion. So this is what we are going to discuss, okay. which teaches us how to love Krishna in five different transcendental mellows. So our loving propensity expands just as vibration of light or air expands, but we do not know where it ends. So generally, you know, we love the loving propensity expands anyway. Okay. The nectar of devotion teaches us the science of loving everyone of living entity perfectly by the easy method of loving Krishna. So when, as soon as we love Krishna, what Krishna says? Whoever spread the message of Krishna to others is most dearest to him. So what Krishna is instructing us, bring everyone to Krishna, isn't it? So Krishna will become more happy. So when we start loving Krishna, we also try to bring everyone to Krishna. So we see other living entities also as our, in relation to Krishna or as our brother, because we are part and brother or sister, whatever you want to say, as they are part and parcel of Krishna. As soon as we pose our loving propensity to Krishna, we also start love others. That's what we have been instructed in Bhagavad Gita, right? That we have to give this message to other living entity also. And we have failed to create peace and harmony in human society, even by such great attempt as United Nations. So, United Nations has been established, but every day, number of flags are increasing in the United Nations. And how you can say that is a United Nations? That means every every year one country is separated. Okay. And because we do not know the right method, so once upon a time, you know, see, one of the Sila Prabhupada disciple was in Japan. And Jagat Tarani Mataji, she was Hollywood actress from Australia. She was so much uh, impressed by Sila Prabhupada. And she was disciple of Sila Prabhupada. Prabhupada told her, you go, I think Burijan Prabhu was there. You go to Japan, you marry with that person. She didn't ask any questions. She just went and got married with her. Prabhupada said, that's it. That, that should be the faith. She knows that Prabhupada will not harm her. So without asking any question to Srila Prabhupada, she went to Japan and married. Okay. So one day, you know, one African and I think, you know, Australian got married. So Prabhupada was telling that you know, this is the real United Nation. Because everyone is Krishna centered. Okay. So, so even United Nations also fail because we do not know the right method. So method is very simple, but one has to understand it with full head. The nectar of devotion teaches all men how to perform simple and simple and natural method of loving Krishna, the supreme personality of Godhead. So the nectar of devotion will. Tell us how to perform that bhakti. Of course, all of you know, but that's in more detail. Like, you know, there are different stages in even bhakti. So if we learn how to love Krishna, then it's very easy to understand. So is it immediately and simultaneously love every living being? So we are not saying don't love anyone. We are saying love Krishna, you will automatically love everything. It's simple. Very, very simple. So it's like pouring the water on the root of the tree, supplying food or supplying food to one stomach. The method of pouring water on the root, so we already discussed this part. Okay. So, so 
So basically, the nectar of devotion will teach us how to turn the one switch that will immediately better everything everywhere. One who does not know this method is missing the point of life. So basically, you know. Nectar of devotion teaches us how and you know, how can we put all our propensities in the service of Krishna. How we can add Krishna in all our propensity. That is another way of seeing. Okay. So, <clears throat> so as far as material necessities are concerned, the human civilization at present moment is very much advanced in living comfortably. We discussed that they are very much advanced as we. Mention um, Western countries are very much advanced technologically and economically. They are very advanced, but number of psychiatrists, number of advocates are increasing. Ideally, they should decrease, right? If they are advancing, psychiatrists are for internal conflicts, advocates are for external conflicts, but they are increasing. That means they are not advancing. There are still there are some so many problems. So they are so much advanced, but still not happy because we are missing the point the material comfort of life alone are not sufficient to make us happy the weird example is america the richest nation of the world having all facility for material comfort is producing a class of men completely confused and frustrated in the life and that's why shila prabhu says he made what he has achieved he made he peace into happy i'm appealing here with to so much confused uh, here with to such a confused man to learn the art of devotional service as directed in nectar of devotion and he is saying that i am sure that the fire of material existence burning within the heart of all, hearts will be immediately extinguished immediately all the material existence will go away the root cause of our dissatisfaction is that our dharma loving propensity is not So the, the nectar of devotion will give us practical hints how we can live in this material world perfectly engaged in devotional service. Nectar of devotion will give us practical hints how we can live in this material world perfectly engaged in the devotional service and thus fulfill our fulfill all our desire in this life and the next. Okay, so how to live in this material world? So that is mentioned. Performing bhakti. So the nectar of devotion is not presented to condemn any way of material materialistic life. It's not presented to condemn any way of materialistic life. But the attempt is to give information to religionist, philosopher, and people in general how to love Krishna, not to condemn anyone, but to explain everyone how to love Krishna. One may love without material discom uh, feature, but at the same time. He should learn the art of loving Krishna. At present moment, we are inventing so many ways to utilize our propensity to love, but actually we are missing the real point. I remember I went on World Environment Day and they love the plants. So we are finding different different ways of loving. So, so real point. So missing the real point, Krishna. So we are watering all parts of the tree. But missing the missing the tree's root, so we are not putting the water. We are putting the water on the twigs, trunk, and uh, leaves or branches, but not putting on the, on the root. Okay, we are trying to keep our body fit by all means, but we are neglecting to supply food stuff to the stomach. And not put it inside the stomach, but we are going to gym. So this is the condition. So missing Krishna means missing oneself also. So if we are not forgetting Krishna, then we are missing ourselves also. There is no point uh, without uh, of self-realization without God realization. It's like if you want to remove the darkness, you turn on the light. So two effects simultaneously happen. Darkness will go away. And there is room is bright. Just like as soon as you eat, two things parallelly happen. Your hunger gradually will go away, and you feel satisfied, and you will you feel nourished. 
So the three things simultaneously happen. It's not happening sequentially, but it happens simultaneously. So same way God realization and uh, self-realization are simultaneous. You cannot say I'm self-realized, but not God realized. I'm God realized, but I'm not self-realized. No, it's not possible. Both will happen parallel. Okay. So the real self-realization and the realization of Krishna go together simultaneously. For example, seeing oneself in the morning means seeing the sunrise also. Without sunlight, you cannot see yourself. Okay, so you are not directly seeing the sun, but you are seeing the effect of the sun, but it's as good as seeing the sun. Without seeing the sun sign, no one can see himself. Similarly, unless one has realized Krishna, there is no question of self-realization. Okay. So the nectar of devotion is specifically presented for persons who are now engaged in Krishna conscious movement. So even the Prabhupada also offers his gratitude. So this nectar of devotion is specifically meant for devotees how to advance in devotional service. So of course I'll just read a few lines. So he's acknowledging whoever has helped him. So that's his greatness. So this is what is meant for nectar of devotion to completely diminish the material existence and bring oneself to spiritual platform so that he can free from miseries which is birth, death, old age, disease, adi 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 gothik and adi devi. Okay. So then, you know, just to summarize Basically, we discuss about genuine love. Then what is rasa? We discuss about that. Then you know every living being has a dharma of service. Render service to someone, but such a service in this world is terminated by death. So every living being loves someone, but relationship and love in the material world is temporary. But God is eternal, soul is eternal. That loving relationship between the two is also eternal. The eternal love and service to God is called Sanatan Dharma. We discuss this. Then we discuss about chapal soup. The release or taste of the mundane rasa does not long and endure. So basically, this material world is full of bhog and tyag. Uh, what is it called? Uh, no. Bhog and Tyag means alternating sense enjoyment and renunciation. So the material world is like that. Then we discuss about search for happiness. Like, you know, different, different level of happiness. Annumaya, Pranamaya, Manumaya, Vigyanmaya and Anandmaya. So physical, mental, intellectual, spiritual. So then we discuss of what are the problems. Overcoming problems. So... There are different different people offer different different things, scientists, philosophers, atheists, putty workers. It's a perishful, painful, addictive, risky, illusory, frustrating, lowering of discomfort and unsatisfactory. So, so all these material activities of mrita, they will end as soon as when life is end. Or maybe before also. It depends on something else. And then, uh, but whereas Bhakti Rasa is Amruta. So other Rasas are Amruta, but Bhakti Rasa is Amruta. However, the mellow release in the transcendental living service of the Lord does not finish with the end of life. It continues perpetually and is therefore called Amruta. That it does not die, but exists eternally. And any action performed for the satisfaction of Krishna In this transcendental bhakti rasa stage of life, can be released perpetually. 
when one is thus engaged in devotional service, all varieties of rasa or mellow turn into eternity. So then we, you know, mundane love and love for God difference. We discuss this thing uh, in the nectar of devotion. So what makes love of God divine? So it's ahetuki to love God, not for any other reason. That God will give me some wealth. God will give me this. But of course, you can approach the God with all this desire. It's not wrong, but it's not pure. It's not wrong, but it's not pure. So that's what it said in Bhagavad Gita that better not to approach demigods, but it's uh, it's better to approach Krishna rather than approaching demigods. So like now taking something for, from the demigod is like a, taking a bribe. So better to directly take from Krishna. So that's why it says in 7.16, Chatur uh, Vida Bhajante Maam Jana Sukritin Arjuna Artu Arthadi Jigyasu Jnanishya Parasarsabha. Four kind of people approach Krishna, Artu, the one who is in trouble. Gajendra is the example. Arthat is Dhu Maharaj's example. Jnani, four Kumaras are the example. Jigyasu is the example. Jigyasu. Anyway, so four Kumaras were Jnani and Jigyasu, I forgot. So we can approach, but it's not pure. But if pure love means without a hetuki. Just like I gave an example that son is serving father thinking that anyway if my father, let me serve him nicely so that all the property he give me. That is not pure love. So basically it's about elevating from fear to love. Someone love, uh, worship God out of fear. Someone worship God out of desire. Someone worship God out of duty. The duty Still, that is not pure. But someone love God, God, worship God because of love, without any reason. So that is highest. So copies are the example. So basically, it should be ahetuki without any motivation. Not that God will give me wealth or something, something. So Sudama Brahman was poverty stricken. So Sudama is a great example and wore tatter clothes still when his wife told him to go to Dwarka to meet Krishna, he refused to go for asking anything from Krishna. He only agreed to go to get an opportunity to get darshan of Lord Krishna. Despite his poverty, he deserved that he should not go with the empty hand while going to meet Lord. Although he was poor, he took something. So that's why Lord Krishna says, Patram Pusvam Phalam Toyam Yome Bhakta Prachrita Taham Bhakti Oparita Prayatatma Asnasi so we should, we can please Krishna just by offering patra means leaf, puspa means uh, flower, phala means flower, uh, fruit, toya means water out of love, love and humility. We should offer it with love and humility. Krishna will be pleased. Hmm. Thus pure devotee have no material motives to demand, but they are eager to love and serve God. And Suddha Bhakti should be apratyata, uninterrupted. So in the material world, everyone wants something. Maybe physical level, mental level, emotional level. Okay. And uh, material it is apratyata. It interrupts it, sorry, terminates it any time. So apratyata means this love cannot be checked. So, for Krishna, the love should, cannot be checked. If a boy loves a girl in this material world, then if he doesn't get a high-paying IT job, the girl's father may get her married to another boy. Thus, the exchange of love will be hampered. But this love of God cannot be hampered. If you want to love God, there is no material impediments. <laughs> for Krishna. It cannot be checked. You may be the poor or the poorest of the poor. 
still you can love god by offering little leaf or fruit or water or cheap rice he is not hungry but he wants your love therefore he come personally he comes yada yada hai dharmasya anyway so spiritual happiness with time increase material happiness decrease in the beginning spiritual happiness may seems like a poison that's what it says in bhagavad gita nectar in the be- poison in the beginning nectar in the end that is spiritual nectar in the beginning poison at the end it's material happiness so senses desire to enjoy sense object temporary soul desire to serve krishna that's eternal Okay. So we discuss anyway. So thank you very much. Uh, we had discussed all these things in Sankalpa camp and all. So I'm not going to discuss this right now. Okay. Thank you very much. If you have any question, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Prabhu Ji, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Prabhu Ji, Hare Krishna, Mata Ji. Any question, comment, feedback? Hope you are understanding. If yes, at least write in the chat yes, so that I understand. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, prabhu ji if you could uh, you know, elaborate more on pure bhakti and nishkam karma yogi so that is going to come <laughs> Achha, anyway, okay. okay so still i will tell uh, if someone wants to leave they can leave uh, i have concluded the class so nishkam karma yog let's say you are software engineer okay so you said you will accept krishna if you can do some activity for krishna through software you are not ready to do other activity so you are attached to krishna sorry you are attached to your activity that is software development and you want to develop app for krishna so that way you are connecting yourself to krishna for service through your activity ye samajh mein aaya yes prabhu ji ye samajh mein aaya now so here you are not directly at attached to krishna but you are attached to your activity and since that activity can be used in the service of krishna you are connecting krishna with your through your activity with your activity or through your activity whatever you want to say you got this point yes yes perfect okay now second is now you are attached to krishna directly okay uh you are attached to krishna directly so now krishna will tell you you develop app you will do that okay okay for pleaser of krishna everything can be enjoyed in the service of krishna anasaktasya visayan yatharam upyunjata nirbandha krishna sambhate yuktam vairagam uchyate so everything can be utilized in the service of krishna favorably within the principle of bhakti yoga okay so now krishna tell okay you are software engineer but he ask you to build a temple You are ready to do that. Irrespective of you have not done civil engineering, mm-hmm. so you are. Then next time he says go and do kirtan. Next time he says go and worship deity. Next time he says go and uh, preach the Bhagavad Gita philosophy. Go and distribute Bhagavad Gita. Cook for Krishna. So you mm-hmm. are ready to do any activity. So that is pure bhakti. In mm-hmm. nis karma, nis kam karma yog. You are attached to activity software. आपको सिविल की बात आ जाएगी तो आप बोलोगे मैं नहीं करूँगा। Correct. समझ गया ना? So this exactly. Is yeah. mm. But still in the nishkam karma yoga you are giving all the fruits to Krishna. You are not enjoying the fruit, but still you have attachment to activity, particular activity. You are you are not fully surrendered. Krishna जो भी बोले, Krishna के लिए जो भी करना पड़ेंगे शायद आप ना करें। mm. Got the point ना? Mm. exactly but prabhu ji here like uh, in terms of like you know uh, full maya vadi thought was like we are doing a job at the end of the month if we don't get a salary na ek din bhi late hua to it's like ki kyun late ho gaya so here like uh, the fruit we are getting from the job is like the only thing we looking for is salary okay so at the end of the month so here like how can we approach like uh, 
first uh, the approach should be like we are doing this thing for a krishna only so is this hmm. the way is this the approach? that's the highest level that's the highest level but krishna has not said that if you want some money you don't approach him he okay. said okay if you want money you approach him if you are in difficulty approach him and since you approach krishna gradually he will purify you okay okay just like dhru maharaj he was insulted by his stepmother okay. when he wanted to sit in the father's lap that you know if you want to sit on the father's lap then he have to take a birth from her womb so mm -hmm. yes utan pad has two wives suruchi and suniti now who will be the mother of dhru maharaj can you tell me from the name suruchi and suniti no suniti and suniti suniti will be the mother of dhru maharaj suruchi means usko bahut sari cheeze karne mein ruchi hai okay 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 so dhru maharaj went to his mother and told he said if you want so dhru maharaj said are mujhe lap mein nahi baithne diya now i want the kingdom even higher than my great grandfather so his great grandfather is brahma ji okay okay so then mother told okay you know if you want to have a kingdom higher than your great grandfather then you have to go to lord vishnu he only can give you not okay. even brahma ji then through maharaj asked her where is vishnu so mother said he may be in forest you will find him in the forest so mother is path pradarshak guru okay okay mother is the guru of everyone every child first mother is the first guru okay and so then so here she became path pradarshak guru for dhru maharaj so when he was going to forest he met narad muni so narad muni tested him mm -hmm. he, he asked that i want the kingdom higher than even my great grandfather i want to approach lord vishnu if you want to help me to get vishnu then you tell me anything otherwise you can go on your way that's what dhru maharaj told to narad muni so yeah. narad muni understood this boy is very deter determined uh, mm -hmm. i should guide him mm -hmm. okay so as soon as there something some desire to approach lord vishnu lord vishnu also sent lord vishnu is staying in your heart as a chaitanya guru okay? okay so as soon as lord vishnu understand you have desire to approach him he sent the guru in the external manifestation so narad muni comes here so narad muni told him how to perform tapasya and through maharaj exit within a 6 month and he did that tapasya he did that tapasya with the desire to have a kingdom higher than his great grandfather so when lord vishnu appear in front of him being a place with his austerity then lord vishnu told him ask whatever you want so then dhru maharaj said i have come here to search for piece of glass but i got diamond now i don't want anything so although the dhru maharaj's desire to have artha economy means some property still the lord vishnu appear and he purified your desire so when you are approaching lord vishnu he will not immediately give you he will give you but he will purify your desire propensities then he will give you so you will not misuse it so it's not wrong to approach krishna even with the desire so that's why this what we are discussing is like a little bit higher level okay. hope i i answered your question yes prabhu ji yes that the answer okay uh, any other question okay then uh, so no class on saturday sunday uh, so we'll meet on monday and just for your information please join sharp 7 o'clock because i have another class at from 8 10 onwards so i'll have to finish by 8 10 
So yeah, I'll just my humble request to join by seven o'clock sir. Okay, thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So the, so this eight ten class will be going on parallelly, huh? Nectar of Devotion daily. Another class, not for it's a, for other things. So it will happen like every day seven o'clock. You have to join. So I have to finish before eight ten at least by eight eight or eight nine, so I can join another class. Okay, thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Thank you Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.